I want to talk about a couple of new uh, memory slash storage technologies that are that are um, available, you know, today and in in the imminent future. And um, I use the term memory slash storage because, as you're going to see here, we start we're actually starting to muddy the waters um, in terms of the demarcation between storage and memory. And I guess my one ask of of everyone here, or I guess success for me, would be. If you guys walk out of here thinking, hey, there's some new stuff out here, it might fundamentally change the way I want to architect my CDN, I better go look at it, right? Or go back to your guys and say, hey, guys, in the lab, you know, you might want to go and take a look at some of this technology. That's really my goal here. Just one more programming note. If some of this does sound like an Intel commercial, I apologize. But, um, but actually, it is very, some of this technology is very unique to Intel together with uh, Micron Technologies. And so you know, you're going to see some Intel product names and some code names in here as we go through this. OK? So, so one, of the, um, one of the, if you look back in history, one of the fundamental things that's happened over time is that uh, CPU performance has significantly outpaced storage performance. That flat line on the bottom that you can barely see, and that is truly quite flat in this scale, is storage performance over time. Whereas our CPU performance, of course, has been following uh, Moore's law, thanks, in, thanks to Intel. And, uh, and actually, CPU performance has really taken off since the introduction of multi-core processors, which um, I find it hard to believe was already 12 years ago. Seems like just yesterday. So, um, so the good news is that this is now beginning to change. Sorry, guys. So if you, if you look at um, sort of the yesterday or really kind of the today case, right, um, you, had, you had a clear demarcation between storage and memory. You had hard drives all the way on the bottom and CPUs with DRAM all the way on the top. If you want to go inside the CPUs, we have the fastest memory available inside of those CPUs in the form of cache. And we usually have a few layers of cache. Well, let's just forget about that for a second. So you've, you had memory, which is DRAM, and you had storage, which was hard drive, and then we started to see uh, 2D NAND-based SSDs uh, come into the picture as well, right? And SSDs offered um, significantly better performance versus hard drives because uh, no longer did you have to deal with the spinning nature of hard drives, right? The physically waiting for data to become available as it spun around the disk. But Typically, the, uh, these NAND SSDs are using the same uh, interface. They're using SATA, SCSI, or uh, SAS as the, the I.O. interface into the server. And that's a fundamental challenge, and I'll talk about that in a second. But as we move to today, which is the middle column, a couple of things happen. Number one, we're moving from 2D NAND to 3D NAND. What does that mean? Well, that means literally, you know, as the name implies, we can now think of these devices as 3D devices. So we start to stack the technology inside of the device, and that allows us to basically increase the capacity per device pretty significantly, and also, in theory, reduce the cost, right? Because it's a uh, kind of a manufacturing, single, single step manufacturing process. So, um, so we go 2D to 3D, you, you get your capacity up. In addition, and around the same time, uh, we saw the introduction of um, NVMe. And NVMe basically is utilizing the PCIe bus inside of the, the server to access that, that drive technology versus SATA, SAS, or SCSI, right? And by doing this simple move, and PCIe continues to get faster and faster each generation, you can actually see significant improvements in terms of throughput, throughput over either a 2D NAND-based or a hard drive-based SATA interface um, to, the, to the order of you know, anywhere from 4 to 6x throughput. Then we go up the chain to something called Intel Optane SSD. And I'll talk about this in a second in, in terms of what this is made out of. But the, the, the one thing I want you to, to, to leave here remembering is that uh, Optane is, is not NAND. The underlying technology is very, very different. We'll get more on that in a second. So what does it buy you over NAND? It actually buys you what we like to sometimes class together as quality of service. And what we mean by that is um, much better latency, especially as the system gets more and more heavily loaded. 
So you can see a reduction in, in latency anywhere from, from 8 to 40 times, depending upon the particular load on the system. So again, moving up that chain towards, um, towards that DRAM sort of um, memory type technology, right? All right, so fast forward a little bit. Um, as of right now, we are sampling and starting to introduce something that hasn't, doesn't even have a, uh, a product name yet. We just call it Apache Pass memory. And this is the same underlying technology, 3D Crosspoint, but it's in a dim form factor. And so now it's connected to, via the memory bus to the CPU. So of course, versus being connected over a PCIe bus, you're gonna get, again, uh, greater, much, much more throughput and much lower latency. But then you need to also consider it from the other direction. You know, what, is, what does this stuff look like versus, versus DRAM? Well, for one thing, you're going to see significantly higher capacities. You know, ask yourself, what could you do with a 512 gigabyte DIMM? The second part of that is it's going to be lower cost versus DRAM. I can't go into details because we haven't released them yet. But it, um, suffice to say, we've been public in the fact that it's going to be lower cost versus uh, DRAM. So now you've got super high capacity DIMMs. Um, at a affordable cost. And oh, by the way, in certain modes, it can be persistent. So power goes out, everything is still in that dim. Okay. I can't get my up and down correct today. Okay, so a little bit on you know, what this um, new stuff is, is made out of. And, and I say a little bit because uh, they don't tell us much. Um, I don't know much about the underlying technology. But again, you know, I want you to, to walk away from here uh, understanding that this is not NAND. It's not NAND. Um, as a matter of fact, um, it's not transistor-based. There are no transistors in this. And um, it's not even silicon-based. It's a totally different material. And the way that it's made is totally different. If you're familiar with, you know, transistor technology and CPU type technology, you know, you have, you have masks and lithography and you have doping and all this good stuff, right? If you remember back from school. Well, this stuff is actually made up of a solid material that then gets essentially sliced. It gets sliced this way and it gets sliced this way. And it gets sliced to form what we call a selector as well as the cell. So the... Uh, I'm not sure, even sure which is which in this picture, but you know, like the orange as an example is the selector and the green is the cell, the, the actual bit of data. And then the blue parts are the, are the interconnects, right? And the term cross point comes from the fact that when you excite this guy going this way and this guy going this way, you can actually read or write to any individual bit that's in the technology. And that's, again, very different than, than a NAND-type technology, which is kind of a block read and block write. So that goes to you know, the latency question. Um, this stuff is actually much more durable versus NAND. So if you're familiar with NAND, it has a challenge with uh, write durability. Uh, this stuff has something like 20x the durability of NAND to the point where you can do on the order of 60, what we call 60 drive writes per day without sacrificing the, the life of the, the part, right? And then finally, um, again, as the term 3D implies, we're able to stack the material. So the, you know, each of these layers just keeps kind of getting stacked up and up and up, and that's where we get the, the, the high capacity from in a relatively small form factor. All right, so what can you do with it is the key question. So, when I look at um, you know, CDN-like things, video delivery-like things, I, I, like to look at, I like to look at sort of a continuum. But on one end of the spectrum, you've got sort of the IOPS intense uh, workload. So IO instructions per second tends to be a, a metric that folks look at in these, in these spaces. So that's the you know, that drive over there on, I guess, your left-hand side. And then you've got the kind of the memory bound stuff on the, on the other end of the spectrum. And then what we're finding is that there's this big area in the middle where because the lines are getting blurred between storage and memory, you may find a number of ways in which you can improve the overall throughput performance, whatever your, 
whatever vector you're looking at within your system by, by inserting you know, one or more of these pieces of technology. So let's take the one on the uh, left first. How might this play out? So if you, if you look at a, um, if you look at a system today, you know, we, we've heard of, I've heard stories of, you know, CDN systems that are essentially, I'll call it over-provisioned from a, a drive perspective. What that means is they're putting a lot more hard drives in the system than they need from a storage capacity just to get the performance up, just to get the IOPS up, right? So another way to say that is, um, Another way to say that, I suppose, is that they can't fill the, 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 the network pipe coming out of the back of the system without putting loads and loads of drives in there, right? Because they just can't get the performance through the SAS or SATA or SCSI bottleneck. So you might find 24, 36 drives in a system just to get the I.O. instructions per second number up. But they don't necessarily need all of that storage. Um, another way to say it is store the... the um, content tends to get striped or duplicated across multiple disks so that they can, again, play games with, all right, if I can't quite get to this content over here, maybe I can get to over here on this drive, right, and get my eye up some. So when you introduce, just take it, the introduction of MVNE, MVNE with like 3D NAND, right? That's kind of the next level up, if you will. You can potentially significantly reduce the number of drives you're using in a system because you no longer have that SAS or SATA or SCSI bottleneck, right? And what that means is um, you can save tons of space, you can save tons of, tons of power, and you can also potentially start looking at more quote-unquote standard type server configurations because a, a server that can host 24, 36 spinning disks is not necessarily a standard sort of server. Not, you're not going gonna to find a lot more 1RUs that can host a, a handful of drives than, than 24 or 36, right? So we actually, um, I'll do this build, sorry about that. So we actually did a study, how many drives does it take to, to hit a number of IOPS, in this case 20,000 IO instructions per second. And at the top you can see that if you're using 7200 RPM hard drives, it would take 200 of those for 20,000 IOPS. And, now, and then, of course, on down the list, if you have faster drives, a, little, it's a few less, about half. But all the way at the bottom, you can do this with one or probably less than one NVMe drive. So from an IOPS perspective, you're gonna see, obviously, a significant improvement when you move to NVMe, even over and above today's SATA SSDs, which that number says four there, but I think it's more like six. Uh, so it's a ratio of like six to one SATA SSDs to NVMe. But if you're on hard drives today, obviously, you can save a heck of a lot of space and power by dropping down to NVMe if you're optimizing for IOPS. Okay, so what about the other end of the spectrum where we're talking about those memory-bound workloads? So there are... Actually, this is my second to last slide, but the, the most straightforward way that our Apache Pass DIMM technology will get used is as um, just memory extension. So, you know, for those of you who are memory bound, you know that buying high capacity DIMMs in order to hit your memory capacity requirements, uh, to do that, you're, you're paying a premium, right? Because those 32 gig and I think you can get 128 gig DIMMs, if I'm not mistaken, but they're like four grand a piece. Does that sound right? I don't know if folks are out there doing that. But anyway, in this example, I'm, I'm just looking at um, 32 gig DIMMs, which are still generally kind of pricey versus, let's say, eight, which tend to be more mainstream these days, or at least when I checked a few weeks ago. Um, so the, the most straightforward way to use uh, this new technology is to actually just replace all that expense, most of that expensive DDR with, um, with Apache Pass. And, um, and, you know, just moving over to that case on the right where you might take a, scale it down to a, a much lower capacity uh, DDR chip and, um, and add with it one of our Apache Pass DIMMs. Now, th there are several modes that this stuff works in. In the, the simplest mode, you actually have to pair up an Apache Pass with a DDR DIMM because we use it as a sort of like an invisible transparent cache, if you will. 
So, um, so you lose the capacity of the DDR, but you'll gain all that capacity. Long story short, you could, you, with one DIM, you could easily replace what's, what's shown on the, the right-hand side there, right? Now, um, in terms of performance, you will not see quite as good perf as a performance as you will with the DDR4, but we believe that in many use cases, it will be, quote, unquote, good enough, right? So, so, all right, so that was the other end of the spectrum, just straight up memory extension. But what we're finding is, again, this, this middle ground, this big gray area in the middle, where, um, where folks are just taking our, our Optane SSDs, that's the NVMe-based stuff, and they're, um, they're using it as an extension of the memory pool. And even over the PCIe bus, the performance that they, the gains that they see in the system are, are significant. We actually write a piece of software that we called IMDT, Intel Memory Drive Technology, that sort of transparently uses Optane SSDs over the NVMe bus as an extension of your, your memory. So in this case, you would have, that becomes your memory pool, and then you would have your storage pool, which might be made of NAND or, uh, or possibly of, of Optane drives as well. And then the, the last diagram there, is just essentially showing that basically uh, because of the, all this new types of technology, you have the opportunity to provide tiers of storage slash memory within your system that really weren't necessarily available yesterday. So, you, so as an example, you could pair up Apache Pass DIMMs with DRAM. You could put an Intel Optane SSD in there for your very sort of uh, most critical uh, data off the PCIe bus, and then you could pair that up with you know, Intel 3D NAND or, uh, or Optane or, um, or even, um, you know, spinning disk for that matter. So essentially, all in one system, you could have, you know, everything from the very hottest sort of content down to the very coldest, if you will. Okay? Great. So that's really, that's really all I had. Um, so did I meet my objective? Is everyone going to at least try this stuff out in their labs when they leave? Yes? Mark? Yes? All right, one. Okay, great. Uh, I might have time for one quick question, if there's a quick, any questions? So, uh, so M.2 is the physical form factor. It's still PCIe, and in fact, yes, we do offer this technology in using M.2. As a matter of fact, we've created something we like to call the ruler technology. So instead of you know, a disk like this, we've optimized the form factor so you can put a lot more capacity in a given form factor. And these things look like long, skinny sort of you know, rulers that come in this length or this length. Um, in that form factor, kind of interesting, you can, you can basically stack all these things this way in a server, and, and we've optimized for the airflow and all that stuff. You can achieve uh, a petabyte of storage in one RU. Any other questions? Okay, great. Thanks, everyone.